Yeah. Thank you. Didn't trip on the step. <laughs> what will the year 2113 sound like? Wow. Um, 100 years from now. 100 years ago, the orchestral work, The Rite of Spring by Igor Savinsky was, was presented for the first time in Paris. And because of its um, avant-garde nature or like dissonant sound, it created near riots in the audience. It went against these traditions. But now, it's considered to be one of actually the most influential works of the 20th century and has greatly influenced the way 2013 sounds today. Artists like Stravinsky or Miles Davis or Tupac Shakur, they're intriguing to me because the musical ideas that they explored actually forecasted the sounds of the future. I've spent a large part of my life being a, a drummer and composer in New York City, um, experimenting, exploring music with musicians from all around the world. So the question of where is music going, it's something that I think about all the time. I get consumed with it. And it's a broad question. Um, but just to make it brief, since it's TEDx, I wanted to look at a quote by one of the most influential figures of our time, Barry Gordy, founder of Motown Records, one of the most powerful forces in music, I believe, of all time. Um, you'll probably never go to a wedding again in your life and not hear something that came out of Motown. But before he actually founded Motown, he worked at the Lincoln Mercury Automobile Plant in Detroit, Michigan. And about that experience, he said this. Every day, I watched how a bare metal frame rolling down the line came off the other end, a spanking brand new car. And I thought, wow, what a great idea. Maybe I could do the same thing with my music. Now, in this, he's speaking about working on the assembly line. And I thought it was an interesting quote because there's two important subject matters within the quote that actually can cover a lot of ground when we're talking about where has music been and where, where will music go to 2113. And the first subject is technology. You know, technology has always, or music has always, been connected to the technological age that we're in. And whether we're talking about drums made out of uh, wood and animal skin, or we're talking about uh, saxophones made out of uh, hammered metal or brass, uh, or iPods made out of stainless steel and glass, a hundred years ago, newly invented sound recording technology and phonographs set the stage for what is now a mature recording industry. And around that time, a man named William Geisber recorded the sounds of World War on the front lines, uh, capturing the sounds of artillery and exploding gas bombs, bringing to light a new way of actually preserving our history. Now, it's overwhelming today to kind of comprehend 2113's uh, technology because it's exponentially growing. But I believe that microbiology and nanotechnology will probably play a huge part in, te in technology, but also within the sound of 2113. Experts in the field of nanotechnology, I don't really know a lot about this, but experts believe that within the next hundred years, we'll actually be able to manipulate matter itself very flexibly. This means pretty much being able to make anything from scratch by moving atoms individually. In the field of microbiology, scientists have already created chips that attach to the brain, seeking to understand our thoughts. And I think that there's no doubt, it's easy to see that man is trying to merge with machine. And in this new technological age, will contribute to the music and the music instruments that will merge. And I'm sure everyone in here at one point has had a song stuck in your head. Being a composer, you know, it's my job to try to get the song that's in my head onto paper or onto the instruments. Imagine some type of instrument that actually could just play the music that you have in, in your head externally. Or imagine some way of actually downloading musical information into your mind so that you wouldn't have to practice. Uh, we can only imagine the type of music and instruments that will emerge as a result of nanotechnology and microbiology, but as in the past, science fiction will become reality. I think it's important to note, too, that there's some instruments like guitar and drums. There's no reason to believe that they won't be here still because they've already kind of stood the test of time. But the technology that remains and the technology that develops will make a, play a huge role in how 2113 will sound. 
I think referring back to Barry's quote, there's actually even a more important subject than the technological one, which is he's working on the automobile plant, on, uh, on the assembly line, and the question arises, how will we as a culture be working? Motown music coming out of Detroit was influenced a lot by how people were working in the industrial age. And I think there's something about Motown music, something uh, unique and gritty about the music that is a product of, of a culture taking uh, participating in manual labor. And we could be talking about working in the automobile plant or, or hammering a railroad or shoveling coal, or we could be talking about uh, farming. These have all played important roles in American music. However, the industrial age as we know it is ending, and a lot of these jobs are actually disappearing because of robots and machines. This is inevitably going to affect the sound and the content and style of music and the music of 2113. Now, an example of this, musical example of this transition is a hi-hat pattern, and it was nicknamed the railroad beat by drummers in the 70s. Now that pattern has been on thousands of records, has made millions of dollars, um, but Ever since the advancement of drum machines in the 80s, there's been a battle between human drummers and machines. Human drummers have actually had to develop techniques to emulate the sounds of machines, things that machines can do that humans actually can't do as well. Ironically, Detroit now is home of one of the largest electronic music festivals in the world. And a lot of this music is created on laptops in home studios by musicians that don't even necessarily live in Detroit or necessarily live in the United States. And in general, outsourced jobs and a computer-based workforce have already had a big impact on music and I believe will continue. While getting my master's degree, I did my thesis on some of the earliest forms of African-American music and how this music affected the music of today. And these works were powerful works, were spirituals and work songs, not created solely for the purpose of uh, entertainment, but for, uh, for building the community and for worship and the pastime while working. Um, this music eventually evolved into the blues, which evolved into rock, which moved, that, that you can now hear in pop music that you hear all around the world. But, the, the, the music that, or, or how people were working at the time of these early songs affected music for the next 200 years. There's just one last thing that I wanted to point out about Barry's quote is that the assembly line itself was created uh, for the purpose by Henry Ford of creating a motor car for the great multitude. Now Barry took this idea and he actually created a corporation that created music for the great multitude. Now, um, as the technology seems to make the world smaller and smaller, uh, I think we can observe that global corporate power is seeming to get bigger and bigger. And I've noticed that my generation kind of has an apprehension about this power that's been expressed in a lot of the artwork. I think we could all list several movies that depict some global catastrophe as a result of insane corporate decisions and technology gone out of our control. Um, and I think as, if we as a culture don't address these very real dangers, the sound of 2113 could actually be something more primitive. Albert Einstein once said that, I don't know what weapons will be used to fight in World War III, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. I think that this, this story is worth sharing because music not only plays an important role in personal development, but I believe that music actually can steer culture itself. In 1703, uh, the writer and politician Andrew Fletch Fletcher once said, let me write the songs of a nation, and I care not who writes its laws. I think that there's many uh, of, of the philosophers of this age are its musicians. And if you want to know what's important to a people or to a culture, listen to that, the music of that culture. And perhaps through some life-extending technology in the future, perhaps we all might be here to hear what the year 2113 sounds like. Thank you.
with, with me today, I'm so honored, I'm so deeply honored to have two brilliant musicians with me who uh, I met in New York City and who both happen to be from Detroit, Michigan. And uh, we're going to play some stuff that hopefully is able to connect the past with the future. And uh, this is our group, Transcendence. Thank you. Chris Scholler on guitar and electronics. J.D. Allen on tenor saxophone. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.